to progressive education societies modern college of pharmacy negdi pune in this video we will discuss about the morphology and microscopical aspects of cinchona bark myself dr bhushan pimple cinchona bark is commonly known as jesuits bark or fever bark because it treats fever and in sanskrit or hindi it is known as kunain or kunaina bark jesuit because the external appearance is slightly silverish because of the presence of mosses so it appears to be like a jesuit biological source it is usually uh, consisting of dried stem barks of various cinchona species now cinchona is a very large genus consisting of various species of that four species are of medicinal importance one amongst them is cinchona calisaya lim cinchona ledgeriana mons cinchona officinalis lin and cinchona saxirubra pau ex clubs these are the four species which are commonly used for their medicinal properties belonging to family rubies the major chemical constituents are alkaloidal in nature wherein quinine quinidine cinchonine and cinchonidine are the major alkaloids besides the plant or the bark also has huge amount of tannins in it tannins are phenols for polyphenols medicinal applications the drug is used as anti malarial agent because of the presence of quinine and quinidine now this drug forms the base for homeopathy because the first drug in homeopathy was presumed to be cinchona then anti arrhythmic the quinidine component in the bark has anti arrhythmic properties recently it has been repurposed for the treatment of anti uh, for the treatment of arthritis a various joint disorders or the pain associated with this can be relieved as the arthritis is autoimmune disorder and quinine and their quinidine derivatives have been found to suppress the immune system cinchona bark the morphology as we have discussed it is slightly whitish or silverish from the external uh, appearance and the color externally is red it is also known as red bark with few patches of silver or white moss internally it is reddish brown to light brown in color odor is characteristic it does not have any specific odor but usual characteristic odor like that of any tree bark taste is bitter because of the presence of a huge amount of alkaloids in it commercially the bark appears to be in the form of say around 2 to 4 cm in length and 5 to 10 cm in length and 2 to 4 cm in width the bark appears in the form various forms like um, curved bark or channeled bark and very rarely you will be able to find the quills or the quill bark as well special features this bark has horizontal striations which makes it different from other barks further it is extremely brittle so when taking section the bark has to be properly submerged in water overnight and even during taking section the bark should be continuously added with one or two drops of water so as to maintain it 
hydrated in a hydrated form now how to take a section is hold the bar in the horizontal position and take sections in the so that so as to so as the blade should pass perpendicularly to the length of the bark this becomes the transverse sections so the transverse section comprises of various uh, layers in it this is a pictographical representation of pieces of cinchona bark there are various layers in the bark like as periderm the first three layers are commonly known as periderm then the just below the periderm is a cortex which has cortical parenchyma and the basic function of the cortex is storage of food material either in the form of starch or tannin or sometimes the waste products such as um, microsphenoidal calcium or zeolite crystals can also be found embedded within the cortex the third portion is secondary phloem secondary phloem is aligned just below the cortex and again it helps in transport of food material there is no xylem in the bark because xylem is the part of a wood and since we have scraped off the bark we and ts has taken off the bark xylem will not be present in any of the barks so now here we will highlight one uh, layer by uh, one by one each layers so as to uh, locate Uh, how they are aligned in the ts this is the external cork the cork uh, the if you note uh, notice the arrangement of the cortical the cork cells they are aligned one above the other like a stack of points and this this is a suberized cork that means the cork layer have been um, secreted they are secreting suberin in them which is water proofing material which prevents the bark from excessive moisture moisture and the degradation due to the moisture the second layer is phloem which is having a staggered arrangement like that of bricks of wall the third is phloem layer now here phlogen and phloderm are totally indistinct they cannot be differentiated but just for uh, the identification purpose i have purposely highlighted phloderm with a dark line but in a normal ts under the microscope they cannot be easily differentiated then the next layer is cortex this is the entire cortex region that houses starch food material in the form of starch you can see here and then these are the large secretory cells and they are found to contain polyphenols like tannins in them then secondary phloem this is the entire secondary phloem with phloem fibers intermittently arranged which are see which can be seen here in a spiral format then medullary rays medullary rays are arranged radially that means they emerge from the center towards the periphery and they are radially elongated they supply the food material towards the cork they are carrying the food material from the phloem and they are supplying them, them into the cork cells for storage next is about the staining of this cinchona bark you can use three to four different stains like sudan red 3 then fluoroglucinol hcl fecl3 and acetic acid first we will have a look at the staining with sudan red if you stain the thin ts of cinchona bark 
with the sudan red sudan red since it is oil soluble dye only the cork cells the superficial cells will take up the dye and they will be stained pinkish in color reddish or pinkish in color so this is how sudan red 3 stains the tears only at the periphery next stain is the fluoroglucinol hcl which specifically binds with the lignified tissue and in the entire tears you can find only the phloem fibers in the secondary phloem to be lignified in nature so these are pinkish or reddish in color on upon staining with fluoroglucinol hcl then the tannin ducts or polyphenolic secretions of the ducts present in the uh, cortex region can be stained with FECL3. FECL3 should be freshly prepared. Now, if you stain this, the secretory cells, they take up bluish black color, indicating the presence of either tannins or polyphenols. Lastly, the acetic acid. Acetic acid, as we all know, is a clearing agent and it makes, uh, it clears the debris and makes the calcium oxalate crystal visible clearly. So, the calcium oxalate crystals can be seen here. These are microsphenoidal in nature. That means they are plenty in uh, number and present in each cells. the actual photographs or uh, micro photographs of synchona bar these are the three layers with cork halogen and phloderm as you can see here the periderm you cannot directly distinguish between the three layers only the region that has been stained with sudan red 3 is identified as the cork layer the upper region is the periderm this is the cortex and the moment this pink color dot starts it is considered or it is it marks the start of the secondary flowing cortex region cortex is here you can see the tannin that's stained with fecl3 these are the tannin ducts then the Cortic cortex parenchyma, they have loosely arranged cells, and you can also find the presence of microsphenoidal calcium oxalate crystals. As you can notice here, these are few of the starch grains and calcium oxalate crystals in the cells, cortex cells. Third and the last layer is secondary phloem, wherein you can find the presence of these phloem fibers which have concentric striations within them and are lignified in nature along with the medullary rays. These are concentric striations and these are the medullary rays here you can notice the medullary rays again these cells are stacked one above the other so this is all about the microscopy of synchona bar